It's better you take the money and subsidize the Nigerian, uh, uh, Nigerian elite class and allow them to buy cheap, uh, cheap petroleum products and all those things. So, so this is, is a value. Is the relevant? Is believing that these numbers are very, very important. There is not that conscious awareness that numbers are very strategic to our planning. And if we don't do that, we will never get anything right. You do ask yourself why we don't have roads in this country. You don't have roads in this country because you don't even know how many vehicles plight your roads. You don't know. I grew up doing. As a child, let me just say that, just in secondary school, doing road census. As a father, I had a father who walks through the Ministry of Works, and then you sit down on the road, and then you are taking numbers of vehicles and different kinds of vehicles. It was a holiday job for some of us. You're taking numbers of vehicles passing through the road, and those numbers are analyzed, and then it, and it determines the lifespan of these roads and when you need to fix the road or whether you need to tie a particular road. So the level of traffic going in on a particular area determine whether the government need to invest more money in tying that road. But now, we don't have that. Look at the number of trucks, the hauling business that has grown in the last 10 to 15 years, and the massive trucks that are passing through our road carrying heavy. We don't have any number. It's a country where you can buy a 500 million naira car, if there is any. But you can take the road, you can drive 1,000 kilometers, you are not paying one dime. To anybody. So, so it's a challenge. And when you do that, you lose practically everything. And that is why nothing is holding. Look, we are dealing with a major security crisis in this country, Boko Haram, for instance. Can anybody tell us how many, in our own production, how many soldiers, how many fighters are there in Boko Haram? How many of them? We, kiss, we are killing them in their hundreds and their thousands, but we keep saying the numbers. How many numbers are there? That allows you to plan. That allows you to define how to deal with it. We are talking about headmen we are talking, uh, and, and the crisis we are experiencing in the country. How many headmen do we actually think are out there in our bushes? Can we define them? If you define them, where are they disagree by these aggregations? How many of them are of this particular age category? And how many of them are women? How many of them are children? And where do we have them? And then that allows you to have a better response. To such, to such situation. But when we don't have this, anything you just do is guesswork, and you will never, ever get it right. Mm -hmm. I think it's, neat, it's important that we are back to basis. Even all these calculations that we make about our GDPs, our other GDPs projection, and all those things, they are not necessarily correct because they are not anchored on the base. The base is the number. The base is the basic number. If you don't get the base right, then you, are, you, you have a problem. And that's the challenge we're dealing with as a country. Okay, uh, let me come to you, uh, Population uh, Commissioner. We talk more now about projections and um, estimates. Even on, on the National Population Commission website, I can say estimates. Mm -hmm. How far is this, or are these estimates to realities? Oh, how close? Oh, how close? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I must say this, that um, from our own end, these estimates are very close to reality. I'll start from the first day a human being enters into the world as the birth registration. You know that the National Population Commission carries a free birth registration. And we've even extended it to if you're below 18 from zero age to 18, your birth certificate is free from us. So with that, I can give you, if we give you a data on birth registration, you can be sure it's not just an estimate, it is empirical. So you continue on this, but I just want to ask you, are you saying that from all the hospitals, I know someone who's, who, whose wife just put to bed mm -hmm. and they got a birth certificate, are you saying that the National Population Commission knows all those birth certificates across the country? We do. But I must also say this, that we also have some hard to reach areas and some rural areas. Every hospital in the country is aware that the only birth certificate recognized is 
the National Population Commission. And we make sure that we have staff that visit these hospitals. We call them registrars. They cover a particular location and they go. I can give you an example in Lagos State when we had the last enumeration area demarcation in Agege local government. We had what we call a mop-up exercise. The mop-up is because we know that a lot of people are not aware it's a form of advocacy. So we get more um, ad hoc people to assist us and they go to all the nooks and crannies. Then we usually would have a swell. Every state does that. Of, for example, at that time in Agege, we had about 97,000, over 97,000 registered children, mm -hmm. you know. But on a monthly basis, probably it could just be about 20, 30. But for that season, just Agege alone, we had 97. So what we do is these registrars visit our hospitals and they collate names of newly born children. You would also be aware that on the first of this, uh, every January, the first lady visits. Um, so. Yes, she does the first baby of the year, and we are part of it. We, I actually eat still the birth certificate same day immediately to let you know that it's no more a big deal. We're doing our best to ensure that Nigerians, because you see, if you can know the birth, the numbers of births and the numbers of deaths, you just need to net it from the immigration, and then you can always get a good figure. Okay. So we're trying our best in the area of birth, but I must be honest with you, in the area of death, Nigerians are not very welcoming, let me put it like that. People don't like announcing death. Some don't even see any reason why they should get a death certificate, especially in rural areas. Some even feel so bad. Some deaths are not even known, like in accidents and all that. They just look, oh, why should I need a certificate? I've lost this dear person, forget it. It's only very few people that we try. We are also trying to get up advocacy in that area. All these are bases to build up data. And I'd like to say this, that I've listened to my brothers here, and I did say to you as well that the census is a priority of all priorities. We need it. But I must also let us realize that governance must be based on dignity and human rights. And dignity, when you're talking of population and development, you're talking of dignity and human rights. That is good livability, good or modern livability for people. You're talking of human welfare, you're talking of human lives, you're talking of how to make sure that people live the way they should live as human beings. That's why we're talking about good education, we're talking about accessible and affordable health facilities for people, and we're looking at our youths, because Nigeria is fortunate to have a large number of youth. It should not be a disadvantage, because Asian tigers made use of that, the large number of youths they had there by making sure they invested in the youths. Unfortunately, that's, we are just trying to do that now. If our government will continue to invest more in our youths, make sure they have the right kind of education, not necessarily certificates, but we're talking of skill education, agency, and all that, vocations and all that, and our youths are better educated, we'll, you'll see that security will be, on, will be improved and more youths will be better engaged, positively engaged, rather than going to a lot of vices. So this is what we are talking about. We're talking about population and development. We're looking at those factors that help a nation to develop despite the numbers. The numbers are okay. The census is fantastic because it gives you the overall assessment. The census is the mirror of the society. It tells you this is how you are. You, and then uh, even our so, old people... So as a taste now, we really don't know how we are. That is it. But we're trying our best. The government is investing in the youths. We're also trying to make sure that we have regular birth registration so that by the time we have the census, this time we'll be able to have a figure that even if, I must say this, even if people want to politicize, it will probably be difficult because usually empirical evidence is not easy to throw away. That's why we want to make sure that this time the census is biometric based and that everything will be done so that our figures can be tested and it will be verifiable and the whole world will see it, that this time this is how Nigeria stands. And I think it will be a good basis for for that development. Okay, we'll, we'll go on a quick break. I was going to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. If the states are allowed by law to do their own local census, no. yes or no? No. 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 Okay, no, no, no. we'll be back shortly. Please don't go away.